Hey there, my name is Martin McGovern. I'm the founder of Career Therapy, and I wanted to take a moment today to talk about whether or not you should quit a job and when. So I get a lot of questions um, from folks who are maybe a couple months into a job or half a year into a job, and they, they start wondering, should I stay here for the rest of the year? Should I stay here for three more years? Should I quit today? What should I do? And when they come to me, they're usually freaked out about a few things. They're freaked out about looking like a job hopper. They're worried about this maybe hurting their long-term career prospects and, and a number of other things. And so today I wanted to pause and just take a look at the whole situation and see if we could make a better decision on where we're at with things. So let's say you're in a role. You took it because you didn't have any other offers and they were going to give you some money, but it didn't pay great or the team wasn't awesome or wasn't exactly the job that you wanted. And you've continued looking for jobs while in that role. Smart thing to do. And you're about six months in and you start seeing some really cool opportunities and you want to start going on interviews. What should you do? Well, the first thing to realize is that it typically takes three to six months to find a job. So if you're just starting the process at six months in, you probably are going to take three to six months or in a pandemic longer in order to find that next role. So it might be a moot point to begin with or a moot question to begin with because you're going to be there a year before you even get that next role most likely. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Second thing to keep in mind is that you're allowed to leave whenever you want. You do not have to stay in a toxic job just because it might look like you're a job hopper on your resume. You do not have to stay at a company that isn't the right work for you just because you want to hit that one year, two year, or three year mark. Early on in my career, I was told that I was committing career suicide because I didn't stay at a company for three years or longer. Well, thankfully I had friends around me at the time who said, wait a second, you're 23. You really think you're not going to get another job at any point in the rest of your life? You could probably quit this job and be okay. And they were right. So what we want to be doing here is remembering that we have power. We have autonomy. We have decision-making abilities. Now, you, this job might be paying your rent. This job might be giving you a sense of security in your life. So I don't recommend bailing on a job just because you want to go do something else. I've definitely done that in my career. It's a scary prospect. And once your savings account starts you know, getting cut in half, you start to question that decision. So the best thing to do is look for a job while you have a job. But that's not always the best situation, especially if you're in a toxic environment or an abusive environment or something along those lines. Now I want to flip it around. Why do people get so scared to make these jumps? Why are we so nervous to, to take control and leave a situation that we don't want to be in? Well, like I mentioned already, the financials, that's a big piece. But people also just don't want to look bad or burn bridges or whatever the thing is that they're nervous about. And so I want to look at it from the company perspective real quick, because companies lie to you. Now, it's a harsh statement. They're not necessarily meaning to lie to you or they're doing it with good intentions potentially, but companies are selling you a bill of goods. Every company is trying to convince their employees that this is an amazing place to work. They're trying to do it through office parties and great programming and, and maybe some additional education or uh, a great onboarding experience, which honestly, I've never been through a great onboarding experience. And so all the reason that they're doing this is to retain you as an employee because it is expensive if you leave. It is expensive if you quit and they have to go find someone to replace you. So companies are going to try and convince you that this is where you belong, that this is where you want to be, and that this is where you should stay for 15 to 20 years, even though if you stay there for 15 to 20 years in today's technological environment, that is a huge detriment to your career, especially if you're using proprietary technologies or anything along those lines. So companies don't want you to leave so they're going to try and make this situation as difficult to leave as possible or 
just maybe make it a little bit more molassesy. <laughs> and so what we want to keep in mind here is that when we're going through this process of quitting this job or leaving this company, they're not really going to be opening the doors for us. So we've got to do it on our own time. We've got to start building that road, building our network outside of work. Because a company like a startup, I'm sure you've seen, startups are very good at making you feel like all your friends are at work, making you feel like this is a family, making you feel like, you know, this is the only place you could be. You got free lunches, you got all this cool stuff. And a lot of people got that bubble burst during this pandemic, right? I was chatting with someone and she said, you know, I had the dream job. I got free lunches every day. I had a short commute, but I had an office. I had uh, coworkers that I really enjoyed being around and I got the pay that I wanted. But then the pandemic hit and the company cut my pay, sent me home. I no longer have those lunches. I no longer have those coworker interactions. I feel like I've been like, downgraded or, or demoted and in a way they were and so they were looking for something new because companies have no problem changing the terms of the agreement like Darth Vader just changing the terms right so a company will say here's exactly what you're going to be doing in this job and then you get there and they change your role they're going to say here's what you're going to be paid and then the budget changes and they cut your pay or you're going to get this bonus or this stipend or this whatever and then that disappears you're going to get it uh we're going to help pay for your education and that goes away or we're family you're going to be here forever and we're going to help you grow in your career and do all this amazing stuff and then you get laid off a year later again they're not actively being malicious this is just how things go it's not personal it's business and so when we flip that around, we want to realize, wait a second, I have control. I could quit this job. I could move on. I have my own ability to stand on my own two feet. And I can change the terms of my own agreement. Maybe you can't just start charging more money or, or, or take an extra day off that's not in your contract. But what you can do is leave. And so when you're looking at this, a company will say that we're family and then lay you off three weeks later. And that is perfectly normal, which means you have the power to accept a contract that says at will and then leave whenever you want. If you're at will, you can leave the day of your first day. You could leave a week in. You could leave a month in. You could leave three months in. You could leave a year in. And we can worry about how to build side projects and find contract work and do other things so a gap doesn't form in your resume and you feel confident and comfortable to make this change and ensure you have savings and ensure you have other things that you know can support you through this transition but don't feel like you're stuck in a job just because you signed that contract just because you told them you're interested right they're going to spend a lot of time trying to get you to say I want to work here and this is the only place that I can work because then they can retain you. So you need to realize that at any point in time, this company can lose you. And once you realize that, you can start making strategic decisions. How do I find, find a contract job to land on when I quit? How do I save up money so that I can go through this transition easily? How do I... Um, start looking for a job while I have a job and do that in a productive way that I feel confident about rather than having to hide it from my employer. So the key thing I'm trying to get across here is that companies lie and employees lie. And it's sort of a mutual lie. I love this company and I want to be here forever. We love you and we want you to be here forever. But if the business changes or the budget changes or we lose a client, you're gone. If my situation changes or I get a better offer or I don't like working here, I'm gone. And that's the mutual decision that you and the company, the mutual lie in a way that you're both part of. And so if you can understand that, you can take more autonomy back in your job search and you can start thinking critically about how to build a career and not just how to stay in this job. If you have any questions about how to quit, how to do it amicably, um, 
how not to burn bridges and things like that, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you like these videos, give me a shout, give me a like and subscribe and whatnot, and we'll keep bringing you these job search shorts. My name has been Martin McGovern. This has been Career Therapies Job Search Shorts. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.